Lisa Winnington from Bremerton is here to help us cook with cheese today at KCTS 9 Cooks. But this one has red snapper with bananas and feta cheese. That's a, it's a wonderful combination, but how, do, how did you put the banana into it? Because people don't normally cook with bananas. Well, the first time I tried it, I tried it using grape leaves instead of phyllo dough, and it was a little too pungent. Um, I needed something that would work with the strong cheese like feta and not be quite as strong with it. And I um, love feta. Is that a sheep's feta that you're using today? It is. Oh, it's nice. a Greek feta. Okay. So, where do we start? We start with uh, the phyllo dough, and phyllo dough is a really hard uh, ingredient to work with because it dries out and you have to keep it moist mm -hmm. without getting it wet. So mm -hmm. you have to work very quickly when you use it. And uh, so what I'm going to do is show you, um, this is actually just two pieces of phyllo that are used. And what you do is you just keep it in the wax paper and cover it with a damp, a damp cloth. Yeah, the cloth you, was damp, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And you only want to use, take out one piece at a time when you're working with it and be sure and cover it up again right away even if you're only going to be a minute. Is the big problem with that being so thin? Yes, it yes. just it dries it, out you can see and right through it. it cracks. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful piece. It's worse than tissue paper in terms of the, <laughs> <Okay>. the thickness. <laughs> so if you just do it pretty quickly before it gets too moist on there. That's going very, very well. Lovely butter. And then you're going to need a second sheet? Yes, I know. All right, Please. I'll get that ready for you. Thank you. Just a thin layer of butter on the first one. And then... Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, Which is a good thing because once you set it down, it's permanently attached. <laughs> it's there, kind of huh? like saran wrap. Yes. The wrinkles don't come out. <laughs> and it's not a smart thing to try to take the wrinkles out. I would no, because it would no, tear. you'll just tear it. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. So you can see a little tear right here where it may have gotten a little no, bit. But the, the great thing about phyllo is that you roll things up in it, so once you get it rolled up, no one knows there's a tear right. in there. Exactly. Okay, so that's all you do to prep the, uh, the phyllo dough. The fish, uh, I've used different types of fish for this dish, but the snapper seems to be the best for the flavor and um, everything, uh, the texture. If you find a filet, you want to feel along the edge and See make sure there's in. no bones in yeah. it. This one happens to have a few. Yeah. So I'm just going to pull those out with a clean pair of pliers here real you quick. That's why every them. woman uh, has pliers in her kitchen. Uh -huh. All good chefs have pliers in their kitchen. Oops. For this and immediate repairs on other things? That's right. That's okay. Right. <laughs> no excuses in my kitchen. So you really have to kind of feel in there and yeah. make sure you get them all because they they hide. I can feel this I one. Think you got right near all of them. I did. Yeah, very good. That's great. Okay, and depending on the size of the fish, this is kind of long, so I'll fold it in half and lay it on the on the okay. dough. Okay. And you just take a banana, this is so easy. Take a banana and you slice it in half lengthwise. Okay. So what was the inspiration for this dish? Seems like an yeah. unusual combination of ingredients. Well, I love feta cheese and I love red snapper. And when I first created it, um, I love grape leaves. And so I was trying to find a dish that had grape leaves and feta. Uh -huh those being Greek ingredients um, and then it kind of morphed into this so you just Beautiful. lay the bananas on the top mm -hmm. this is again the Greek feta sheep's milk feta what we're gonna do is just uh, slice that about that thick mm -hmm. is feta basically a, a mild cheese a harsh cheese a strong cheese uh, it's... Well, George I think you should try this <laughs> <laughs> that could be dangerous folks I like the texture. Oh, no, that's very good. There's a little that's bit a of sharpness taste. to it, especially it if it's a sheep's feta. Mm -hmm. That's very good. Mm, I love it. Mm. And uh, then you just take a little bit of chopped parsley, sprinkle it over the top. You don't want to do too much. Okay. And that is the whole inside of it. So as you can see, it's rather minimal ingredients. Just take this, fold it over. 
try and make sure it closes up. None of these ever come out looking perfect, so don't expect it to be a nice little perfect package. And that one's going to be very, per almost close. That looks great. Uh, well done. Okay. Great, thank you. Are we done with the butter? We are. Okay. And so Take we're just going to put that on our, oops, on our baking sheet. I've got one already prepared. Right so that I didn't take too much time out here. And this goes in the oven at 425 for 15 to 20 minutes until it's puffed and golden brown. Okay. okay. So that's a hot oven, but not very long. Right, not, not very, very long, long at all. Meanwhile, while that's cooking, what do we do next? Then we start the, uh, the sauce, a beer blanc sauce, mm -hmm. and we just use a white wine vinegar uh, I'm just going to pour it right pour into it right there. In the we pan, use okay. about a uh, fourth of a cup of vinegar and about a third of a cup of a good dry, not Chardonnay. You can't make this dish with Chardonnay. It's got to be a Sauvignon Blanc or a Fumé Blanc. About a third of a cup there. And this blanc. Sauvignon Blanc that you're using today came from Chile, right? It did. It's so nice it's not crisp. aged in oak, it's aged in stainless steel. Great. And uh, we've got shallots. It takes about a quarter of a cup of shallots. We're just going to throw that in there with those. Okay. And we cook that over high heat until it's reduced by two-thirds. And so this will uh, uh, reduce down. And once it does that, what we do, I'm sorry, reach. Add the butter. Look at all that butter. Mm -hmm. Uh, we cube the butter and add it piece by piece so that it cooks evenly and just really gets in there and mixes well. Um, we add that once it's reduced and uh, start whisking it. Okay. That's a very quick boil. That's going to boil down pretty fast. Isn't yes. It? Mm -hmm. So, Elisa, you've been on KCTS Cooks before and you made a wonderful breakfast dish for yeah. us, which was Italian style eggs Benedict, right? I did. And I, I wanted to tell you that I make that all the time. I love that dish. Wonderful. Yeah, Thank it's you. great. So you guys also need to uh, get the book for that one because yeah. it's great. Thank you very much. I enjoy Elise. doing it and supporting PBS. Yeah, your food is great. Thank you. So I think we're about halfway there already. Mm -hmm. One of the great things about a wide pan is that it reduces things really quickly. Mm -hmm. Now, how far down are you going to reduce it? Are you going to take all the moisture out of it, or? It should be just about two-thirds of its original volume. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. But sometimes I think we reduce it a little too far, and then all of a sudden things start getting a little brown, and you don't want necessarily want that. Right, right. This is looking pretty good. Um, it's not looking like it's... So what else do you serve with this dish once you get this it's sauce hard finished? To... It's hard to choose a side dish because it's such a strong flavor mm -hmm. and uh, really dominant in everything that you you serve with it. Green beans, steamed green beans are great with it. Uh, rice is wonderful. Rice would be good. I, I love green beans, so that, that, that's no problem. Mm -hmm. All right, I think this is ready. A salad, go a salad goes okay. great with it. You should serve a salad with yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. I think this is ready to add the butter. Okay. okay. So we just yeah, add we that. we a bunch of butter to add it. We'll do a couple pieces at a time, make this go a little bit faster. Do you want to stir while sure. I... I'll whisk. You just whisk that in slowly. You know a lot more about sauces than I do, so you know why it goes so slowly, I'm sure. <laughs> yes, it needs to go in slowly because you're making an emulsion. We're actually suspending little droplets of butter in the wine and vinegar mixture that you've made in the pan. And if you put all of the butter in and stir it, you'll just wind up with butter floating on top of the wine and vinegar. So you need to add it a little bit slowly. This is great. Are you ready? Vinegar, you? Yes, you can. Mm -hmm. You put a couple more. How in. much butter in, in total there, Lisa? This is two sticks, two uh, sticks. one cup okay. total. And that's enough to serve how many? Six. So the it looks like a lot of butter, but we are going to spread it out over right. a yes, number indeed. of people. Okay, more butter. So this is very much like making a hollandaise sauce, only really it's easier to put yeah. eggs in it. My hollandaise was a lot easier than this. 
I believe I did the blender hollandaise the last oh, time. Oh yeah, was here. that was great. Yeah, I, I I love to make a hollandaise sauce because once you've got everything in there, it, it, it happens real fast. Yes. Should I go ahead? And... Yes, go ahead and put some more in. This goes really fast. Don't be daunted by this sauce. It's really easy to make, but you're going to want to get the DVD so that you can watch the method right, to do right. this. And, and, and you know, uh, there are a lot of little tricks you see on the DVD that just don't get into the recipe. I mean, comments that you make, well, when I had this once before, I did such and such. Well, that's going to help the people at home when they're trying it, too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You ready? Uh-huh. Well, that's going through a half cup of butter pretty quick, and it's getting very it's nice getting and thick. It's getting thick. And yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, it really good. It almost looks like almost like a pudding now. Mm -hmm. So if you just melted butter, it wouldn't be thick like this. And obviously, our sauce when we started was not thick. It's the whole emulsion that's right. happening that makes it thick. You ready? Mm-hmm. I think you can put all the rest of that in here, and we're good to go. There we go. Mm -hmm. The butter be done. I can okay, stir that ready? if you want to get the fish. We are ready for fish. Oh boy. Oh, this is beautiful. Don't those look beautiful? Oops, excuse me. This is beautiful. Oh yeah. We're gonna need a spatula here. And like I said, they, they never look just perfect, but I think they look pretty darn perfect. I think perfect. they look extremely appetizing. Thank you. Yeah, that's hot. Oh, good. Perfect. And the sauce is smooth. I'm going to set this one over here behind you, Carol. Lovely. Actually, I think the other one is the beauty shot, George. Mm -hmm. Try that one on your plate. I'll tell you. Okay. Good stuff. And do we need to nap this with some sauce? Hmm? Well, we can yeah, just pour right. the sauce, put some sauce right on top, over the top. We? And George, could you hand me that green plate, please? This? Oh, look at that. It smells fantastic. And the green plate, please. And the what? Green. The green plate. Oh, the green plate. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, this is absolutely beautiful. Second one. And you see, it's so easy and it seems so glamorous. And that little thin <laughs> feel, it just turns out the most beautiful brown crust you've ever seen. And a seen little sauce bite. there. Now we just have a little bite here. Save some for me, George. Mmm. You Filo can serve that fish. for dessert. That's a mm. oh, that's good. Oh, I've got a little of everything in there. Mm. I do too. You gotta try this. This is uh, wonderful. I don't, yeah, I did get Very some red nice. snapper. Okay. Go to the telephone right now. Give us a call at 1-800-443-1999. Pick up two or three of these books because you'll find that if you give these to friends, neighbors, and family for any occasion, you're going to be a very, very happy person because they are going to be very happy too. Give Maybe they'll cook for you. Hmm? This is good. <laughs> Thank you very much. This is great. You're very welcome. Thank you. Yum. Yeah. <laughs>